Assalamu alaikum. Hello everyone and welcome to Bedtime Stories. Thank you for joining me today. Are we all ready to read our story today? Have you brushed your teeth? Are you cosy and relaxed in your pyjamas? Is that a yes? Then let's get started. I am going to carry on reading Detective Adventures with Biff, Chip and Kipper. I hope you all enjoyed this story that I, I read to you in our last episode of Bedtime Stories. And I hope you enjoy more stories with Biff, Chip and Kipper. They're always on an adventure and they're always doing exciting things. Something that you can relate to when you're out and about in the day, enjoying yourselves with your friends and family and being a detective or having fun or just playing outside and enjoying the weather. I know sometimes it rains and it's not very nice, but as we read from our last story, when it rained, they um, did it indoor play, didn't they? So it's not always too bad and rain is good. It cleans the earth. Anyway, let's get started with this, with tonight's story. So, the portrait problem. Are we all comfortable? Very good. The children in Mrs. May's class were painting. They had to do a portrait. I want you to paint someone's face, said Mrs. May. First, I will explain to you how to do it. So a portrait is when you draw or you paint someone's face. Yeah. And now Mrs. May is going to explain how that should be done. Have any of you painted at school or at home? Have you done a portrait? If not, maybe you could give it a try tomorrow. Mrs. May drew an oval face. She drew three lines across it and put one line down the middle. The eyes were halfway down the top of the ears and level with the eyes, she said. Chip was good at painting. He had painted a portrait of Anina. It's brilliant, said Nadim. It looks just like Anina. Wow. Mrs May put the finished portraits on the wall. Mine is rubbish, complained Wilf. No, it's not, said Biff. You just haven't got the ears quite right. Chip had a sketchbook. He had done a sketch of Mrs May. It's quite good, smiled Mrs May. To get even better, you need to practice. Try to draw as often as you can, said Mrs May. Wilf and Nadine went to play with Chip. Chip's sketchbook was in Biff's room. He had done a sketch for Nadim. I'd like to be an artist when I grow up, said Chip. I'll keep this, said Nadim. In case you become a famous artist one day, suddenly the magic key began to glow. The magic key, the children, took the children on a new adventure. Where did the magic key come from? The magic took the children back in time to a city in Italy called Florence. I wonder why the key has brought us here, said Chip. Just then, they heard shouting. A man was at her open window. He was shouting at some men in the street. But sir, called one of the men, your picture is too big and I can't go down the stairs. We took, we could knock down the stairs, said another man. But why don't you just cut six inches off the end of the painting? Impossible 
yelled the man. I'm sure these children have more sense than you. He pointed at Wilf, Chip and Nadine. Children, he shouted, I am Sandro Bitticelli, the artist. Come up to my studio and tell me which end of my picture. It has taken me two years to paint it. This picture is called Spring, said Sandro. Do you like it? Chip gasped. It's a famous painting, he whispered. I've seen it in a book. Nadine was looking at the window. There's no need to take the staircase down. He said, knock out the window frame and lower the painting into the street. Ha, huh, said Sandro, clapping his hands. Bravo, children often know best. <coughs> you want to be an artist too? Sandro asked, looking at Chip's drawing. You need to work hard and draw all the time. You must look and, and study what you see. See, I am painting a portrait of a young man. Sandro went on. I want you to help me. Put on this tunic so I can copy the folds in it. Suddenly, there was a loud thumping noise and the house began to shake. The jars and pots began to rattle. Some fell on the floor with a crash. It is an earthquake, gasped Chip. Oh no, groaned Sandro. I cannot work like this. The man next door is a weaver. He looms, makes the walls shake. Go next door. Please beg him to stop shaking the house, Sandro pleaded. I will tell him to listen to me. He will not listen to me, but maybe he will listen to you. The weaver came to the door. Your looms are shaking the house of Sandro. The artist, said Nadine, he cannot paint his pictures. What do you think? The man next door who is a weaver said. Do you think he was kind or do you think he was mean about it? Let's find out. The weaver showed them his looms. I weave fine cloth, he said. It is how I earn my money, my living, and in my own house I can do whatever I please. Sandro, the artist, paints beautiful pictures. He paints fine portraits, said Chip. That is his job. Oh no, weaving cloth is a proper job, the weaver replied. What did he say? asked Sandro. In his house, he can do as he pleases, said Wilf. So, said Sandro, I need to teach him a lesson. Wait here. Later, Sandro returned with some workmen. They had ropes and long, thick poles of wood on a cart of an enormous stone. The men built a strong frame. Then they pulled the boulder on the edge of the Sandro's roof. Place it on the very edge, Sandro ordered. It doesn't look very safe, said Wolf. Sandro rubbed his hands. No, it's not safe, he said. We will see what happens when the weaver's looms starts working. The weaver's loom began to shake Sandro's house. The enormous stone shook as well. It began to move. What are you doing? cried the weaver. The stone is unsafe. Remove it. 
I, it will fall in my house. It will crash through my roof, he wailed. Well, said Sandro, in my house, I can do what I please. Nadine had an idea. He spoke to the weaver. Let the artist paint a portrait of you, we of you wearing a cloak of your fine cloth. Rich people will see it and want to buy it from you. Why not work at different times? Nadim added. Then you will be both happy. The two men shook hands. The weaver agreed to work in the mornings. The artist agreed to work in the afternoons. That was clever, Nadim, said Wilf. Sandro began the portrait of the weaver at once. He gave Chip one of his sketches. Then the magic key began to glow. It was funny when the stone on the roof began to shake, laughed Wilf. I wonder if the portrait and the weaver will be in that book I saw at school, said Chip. Let's find out. That is a really good portrait, said Mrs May. Did you draw it? No. Sandro Botticilli did, said Chip. Very funny, Chip, said Mrs May. Wow, that was quite an adventure, wasn't it? I really enjoyed that story. Did you? What did you learn from the story that we just read about the portrait? I have a few questions for you. Let's see if you can answer them. What did Nadine suggest they could do to get the painting out of the house? Can any of you remember? Very good. Nadine suggested instead of breaking the staircase, the picture, the painting could be lowered through the window so it didn't need to be cut off. It could be passed down with a rope down the window. What is making Sandro's house shake? Can you remember? It wasn't an earthquake. It was the weaver weaving next door. That's what made the house shake. We'll do one more question and then we can move on to another story if we have some time left. Have you ever had to sort out a problem with a friend? How did you do it? I'll leave that question with you. If you've ever had a problem with a friend or a family, how did you sort it out? I think Biff, Chip and Kipper really helped the weaver and Sandro the painter, didn't they? They, as children, advise the adults to compromise. Sometimes children also know what's right. Better than adults, I would say sometimes. Compromising is one of the things that helps us not to argue or get into a fight. I think the weaver and the painter we're going to get into a bit of an argument, weren't they? Because the weaver said he can do what he likes in his house. And Sandro wasn't very happy, was he? Because he wanted to do his painting, but he couldn't because the house was shaking. And Sandro wanted to teach the weaver a lesson by putting a stone on, on his roof. So when he started weaving, the house would shake and the stone would come crashing down on the weaver's ceiling. And hopefully that would help him to realize that when the house is shaking, he can't do anything. So I think Biff, Chip and Kipper did a fantastic job in helping the weaver and the painter come to an agreement. Next time, maybe you can help your friends come to an agreement. I hope you enjoyed today's bedtime stories. And I'm excited to see you again soon 
for our next bedtime stories. I hope you're all relaxed and cosy and ready for bed. Don't forget, if you haven't brushed your teeth, please go and brush it now. And I will see you again soon for our next bedtime stories. Have a good night. Assalamu alaikum.